Intelligence officials testified on Capitol Hill today and presented a sobering picture of the multiple threats facing the United States. Russia continues to be a major concern, and new accusations took a big stage in the hearing. Security officials also painted a bleak picture when it comes to the nation's finances. Under no uncertain terms, the message to lawmakers today was the United States is under attack. Russia, Iran, North Korea, and China are all bad players at some level. From fundraising by terrorist groups to misinformation, the new frontier in this war is space. Russia and China will continue to expand their space-based reconnaissance, communications and navigation systems in terms of numbers of satellites, breadth of capability, and applications for use. Advanced and expanded nuclear tests are expected from North Korea. The intel community is now admitting Kim Jong-un will not give up his nuclear program. Because the regime views nuclear weapons are critical to its security. Kim also probably sees nuclear ICBMs as leverage to achieve his long-term strategic ambition to end Seoul's alliance with Washington and to eventually dominate the peninsula. The panel was in unison. Russia is already meddling in the 2018 elections and is not expected to reverse course after having what intel officials believe to be a considerable impact in the 2016 elections. With respect to Russian influence efforts, let me be clear. The Russians utilize this tool because it's relatively cheap, it's low risk, it offers what they perceive as plausible deniability, and is proven to be effective at sowing division. The sobering assessment came on the development and future use of artificial intelligence and how it applies in the theater of conflict. There is clearly a race for technological superiority between the superpowers. So artificial intelligence, machine learning, which is really kind of where we are right now. It's more machine learning than it is artificial intelligence. We're seeing uh, all of our near your peer competitors invest in these kinds of technologies because it's going to get them to decision cycles faster, allow them to digest information in greater volumes, and have a better situation understanding what's happening in the battle space. And the director of national intelligence, Dan Coates, today went off script, saying that the national debt is a dire threat to national security and said that the fiscal stability of the country is a concern to the military. During the Senate intel hearing today, Mike Pompeo, the CIA director, called out two reporters from the New York Times for false reporting on the CIA. The Times reported the CIA paid Russian operatives for information on Donald Trump. In our view, the uh, the suggestion the CIA was swindled, swindled is false. The people who were swindled were James Rison and Matt Rosenberg, the authors of those two pieces. Meanwhile, the Department of Homeland Security is calling out NBC News for misleading reporting. The DHS says NBC falsely claimed Russia penetrated voting systems in several U.S. states in the 2016 election. NBC's flub is adding fuel to the flames of the president's war with the media. On Sunday, the president tweeted out, calling the fake news media and citing the media's low approval ratings. For more on this, we turn to Chris Chambers, professor of journalism at Georgetown University. Well, I can tell you the cables really don't care about whether it's right or wrong. They care about whether people are watching or not, and Trump has saved cable <laughs> right. in many, many respects. <laughs> i got to pay those bills. Uh, you, but, know? <laughs> you know, back in my day, and it's still my day, but years ago when I got into this business, if you put something on the air or you wrote something that was wrong, you could lose your job. Right. Whatever happened to those days? Well, I mean, again, they got to pay the bills. <laughs> They've got to pay the, you know, they, they, they're, they're relying on advertisers on a number of different levels when you're talking about CNN. And they have, you know, they have their corporate masters. With the New York Times, it's a, it's, it's a different sort of situation. I mean, they, they can sit there and, and hide behind a wall basically saying, look, this is a weird universe we're in now. We got to rely on this source and this source and this source, you know, and, and, if, and, and they can basically hide behind this wall and say, Pompeo, if you have proof that we made it up, let's hear it. Because they can always say, oh, well, we've got, you know, Joe Blow, the, the, the weird source that we relied on. Now, Joe Blow could be somebody utterly spurious, but they can still fall back on that. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you've got a lot of things going on here, Ed. And, and you know, I don't know, um, you know, with NBC and, 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 and the other story, that was definitely a flub. That was definitely, I don't know what was going on there, quite frankly. I could tell from the beginning. This other stuff is all, you know, I, I think they're hiding behind the chaos. Now, it's the chaos 
chaos that they've created, but they can effectively hide behind it. Well, there's plenty of material for the president to fire back and right. fire up his base by creating this war with the media. Right. But in instances, question is, is he justified? I think he's justified in certain circumstances. I think he's what he's got to be careful of is that it's almost kind of a reverse boy that cried wolf, is that he can, he can push it. When, when it comes to some of these security issues, oh, it is definitely front and center. But if he tries to hide behind that, say, with the, the, the porter and the, the domestic violence problem um, that has been investigated in the White House, that kind of... It gets a little softer clay, mm -hmm. so he's got to be very shrewd. And if 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 he's if he's erring on the side of firing up the base all the time, what you might have is a situation where he's going to rely on that fake news stuff a little bit too much, and the ground will give way. So they've got to really be careful. I think they've got to pick and choose. Uh, I think the, the security stories, New York Times, NBC, et cetera, CNN, I think are good ways for them to push back. If they try to rely on it too much, as we've mm -hmm. seen in the Porter situation, it could backfire on them. And finally, uh, are we seeing tribalism drive news cycles? MSNBC, the liberal audience, Fox, the conservative audience, Hannity's got a lot of material now. He's clearly the number one show in cable. CNN is leaning so hard just against the president. I mean, these are these are my observations. What are yours? Oh, I think I, it's. I, why don't I put it this way? Ed, I say yes and yes. <laughs> it's yes. There's tribalism there, but I think a lot of it again is a business model, especially when you're talking about CNN, to some extent with MSNBC. I think it's definitely tribalism with Fox News, but they've they've. They've been transparent about that from the get-go. Mm -hmm. I think with, with, with CNN, it's a mixture of, and, and, and MSNBC, tribalism plus. So I said tribalism plus money. So they have to excite some core audience to get the money in. If, if, quite frankly, if, if they could do it by, by getting people, for, you know, if, if, there were, if there were intelligent life on Jupiter that would tune in, they would start talking bad stuff about Saturn. So, I mean, you know, it, it's that kind of craven kind of situation. Professor Chambers, great to have you with Thank us tonight. You. Thanks so much.